prabhat ha uh, i would like to call upon mr dinesh to introduce the speaker uh, uh, good afternoon everyone uh, dr r edwin raj is uh, is a professor working in the department of mechanical engineering from said Xavier's Catholic College of Engineering in Nagarkoil and coordinating the counseling cell of the college and he did he did his graduations in mechanical engineering from Madurai Kamrajar University in 1993 post graduation in thermal engineering from Annamalai University in 1995 and completed his doctoral degree from IIT Doorkee in 2008 He is in teaching professor uh, profession since uh, 1996 with more than 25 years of experience. He has guided eight PhD degrees in engineering. He has published good number of papers with high impact factor and citation. His H index is 17 and has total citation of 947. His motto is to be joyful and hard, work with competency, and to make those around happy. With this uh, brief introduction, I would like to call upon Dr. Uh, R. Edwin Raj to share this forum. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Good day. I screen and purpose of course. Is it done? Is it okay? Sir, thank you very much for the accepting our invitation. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, are you able to see the screen? And uh, is it the audio is clear? Just I wanted to confirm it. Yes, sir. It is clear for me. And good now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, how long I can go? Uh, it is already twelve twenty one. Please tell me so that I will adjust accordingly. Ma'am, please. I think it is. Uh, yeah it, it should not be a problem as as long as the participants are able to stay with us for 2 o'clock plus there is no need of a compromise so that will be nice one and a half hours yeah. i think that should be sufficient i think it that should be sufficient yeah you okay. go ahead sir please go ahead thank you very much okay so uh, uh, thank you for all the introduction and for your kindness Uh, uh in allowing me to talk on uh, uh, this topic so this is uh, uh i'll be talking about uh, the importance of uh, response surface methodology or rs and especially those who are doing uh, experiments and how it is important i still remember uh, how i learned uh, this and i applied uh, during my phd research it is a really a good story so that you can also listen to it it was in 2006 i was presenting a paper in an international conference at goa and it was a post presentation and i was just it is in my first year of my research and i just started my what kind of work i am supposed to do the outcome i am that i have put it on the board and one of the participant actually uh, she uh, lady she is from us she is a good researcher and uh, she just asked me hey edwin you are uh, doing it seems that you are doing experimental works and uh, how you are going to do it how you are going to vary the variables and uh, how will you analyze your results like that he asked then i thought uh, okay i told uh, these all uh, the process variables uh, i believe that it will affect the outcome so like that i told then he asked are you doing any design of experiments then i thought that is very alien to me i have never heard about the word design experiment at that time in 2006 then i said sorry madam uh, i have no idea about the design of experiment then he said oh she really wondered how can you do experimental analysis without designing it like that he told there will be a lot of variables involved and without designing what you should do and because within the stipulated time and money you should do the experiment and should inference out of it how we are going to do about it like that he asked 
Then I felt very sad about it. Then I came back uh, to my college at IIT. Then I really searched what is design of experience and how it is important for uh, researchers, especially those who are doing experimental work. Uh, without that, I think it will not be good at all like that. I realized the importance of designing the experiment, They're doing it, then getting the best out of uh, our experimental results. Then I really pondered over one good book I came across. I still recommend that one is Design of Experiment by Douglas Montgomery. Mostly it will be available in your library. It is available to purchase. So if you are really into it, I also recommend you have a copy of Design of Experiments by uh, Douglas Montgomery. Okay, with that introduction, I'll keep going. So uh, you know that uh, this is uh, how we decide. Statistics is alien to engineering, of course, unless others you uh, you may not understand statistics. I also find it very difficult with statistics. But statistics, statistics is nothing but it is a it deals with collection, presentation, analysis, and use of data. Data is something huge, but we should uh, be able to uh, make decisions using data. Data data is so high so much and it should help us to solve the problems and especially when it comes to engineering when it comes to engineering we should able to uh, i think we should able to design it and especially the process which influences the outcome that we need to know it so statistics is a science of learning information Talk about one more word. I think in the last session also you came across when you talk about data statistics, you should be familiar with the word variability. Variable, you will not get uh, repeatedly the same thing, it will get varied due to a lot of uh, factors. We talked about errors, errors in measurements. You know that there are a random errors, there will be system errors. Uh, and you'll be having uh, observational errors and uh, so much, isn't it? So uh, our uh, values, observations will not get repeated and it will get very. So we should be uh, able to and you should be able to get a better uh, inference out. Uh, I think you must be familiar about it also. Uh, just to, because we are talking about data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. Just, uh, it's a philosophical thing. I always uh, allow to do that. So you have four levels. I think easily you can think about so data excuse is, me, sir. yeah. Excuse me, sir. sir uh, like your yeah, uh, bandwidth is a little bit low. I guess uh, that's why it's a little bit uh, interview. Your voice is also interrupting. Can you please okay. uh, switch off your video so that you can, uh, that your audio and presentation will be better. That I will do, sure. Good, that uh, whenever there is a problem, uh, if you say, really good, that is good. Thank you. Uh, I think I will just, uh, I'll go back. Sorry, are you hearing? Yeah, yeah, sir. on top you can uh, see that, uh, that you can uh, change the yeah, mute yeah, and unmute yeah. video. I understand, okay, got it. Is it okay now? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now the audio is fine, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can go ahead. Yeah, yeah thank you. So uh, the four levels of thinking is uh, these four words you just uh, remember. I think most of you are research scholars uh, and uh, those who have just done the research also. Uh, some of the uh, PhD holders are available and processes are also available. Data is what is available in the world. So much of things are there. Okay. And then we come across information. Information is the one which we have collected and we have organized so that we can take it, retrieve it when it is needed. So the data which is organized and kept it for our use is uh, information. And the knowledge is the information which we have collected and we have kept that we have digested and we have understood it. 
okay so that is uh, is very important data will be available in internet google it uh, throughout the world so much of data is available in every libraries it is available but uh, we may not use it but certain things we will collect and keep it in, in uh, folders or in uh, seraxing uh, photocopying and we will keep it in uh, our files and those are informations but those things has to become a knowledge that has to be digested understood that is knowledge and of course wisdom is really using that knowledge which has been gained uh, for uh, producing or producing results to getting outcomes for good things using the knowledge for our betterment is wisdom i hope we will do it so just you think about knowledge acquisition is okay in the UG level, it is okay. But when it comes to the PG level, we should be able to apply, analyze uh, those knowledges, what we have acquired. And in the PhD level, we should be able to evaluate and create. Catch those words as we keep in the higher level of learning. Uh, we should be able to evaluate and create uh, things. That is a higher level we need to go that is why we are attending this type of workshops is it not we uh it's a very lower level is remembering and producing it in the exams then we started to understand apply analyze evaluate and we'll create and we'll come across uh, we'll come out with uh, papers and we'll come out with the products we'll come out with the good suggestions that is what we are expecting is it not so just uh, 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 why this design of experiments and all other things is we do experiments I think you can see here, we do experiments and uh, we will uh, uh, compare, contrast, analyze it. And we need to organize the experimental work. We should be able to design it. And of course, we should evaluate, compare and estimate. You see the purposes. Why we go for the design of experiment is, or why we go for RSM is, we do experiments we design it we need to basically compare evaluate the results we got it and we should be able to predict estimate certain things also so as a model development this is the purpose so it is all active learning so for this purpose actually this rsm is very important now we will directly go into the rsm this is the philosophy behind why we should go for uh, this RSM method. So three basic methods of data collection. Okay, so that uh, uh, you know that uh, one is uh, some uh, retrospective study. That is a historical data. That uh, of course engineering we may not be able to do it. Archaeologists and uh, other people's uh, weather predictions and other all they take the prehistoric data that we are not doing in engineering. Observational data is uh, the presently collected observed and we may buy it from some people so that is one way of uh, collecting the data and the third is our uh, area now the third way of uh, basic method of data collection is we do experiments we observe things we measure the output and we will get data okay so this is the data we have generated we have done experiments and we vary the inputs and we get outputs and those will be uh, stored and we need to process it. So data collected in response to process input changes comes under the third category. That is how we call it as designed experiment. That what we are uh, supposed to do it. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. experiments, measurements, and analyzing the data. So it is a, we are trying to develop an empirical model. So empirical model is created by observation and experiment. We do experiments, we vary the inputs, we observe the output, and we create data, and then we will analyze it. So reliable result is based on the substantial amount of test data. More we do the test, more reliable, the word reliability, which we already talked about it, isn't it? So more we do experiments, more reliable our results are. I think uh, most of the mechanical students, uh, they know it. Whenever you do an uh, tensile test on a new TM, we won't stop with one experiment. Minimum three 
it is better to have five for the same uh, specimen, isn't it? We will make similar five specimens and we do five experiments, then take the mean because you know it will vary because a lot of factors are involved in getting a result. So reliability of results, because we, you won't rely on a single uh, test. We minimum do five or if it is very costly, we will do three for the same uh, specimen or the same uh, uh, type of specimen, I would say. So reliable results is based on substantial amount of test data. So how reliable it is, how good it is, it is better to have more data. So empirical models provide reasonably accurate predictions when, when the operating conditions and the test conditions are the same. So when you use it for a prediction, so the platform should be similar to what we have done it in the testing. If the testing and the real cases are, conditions are almost similar, then our prediction will be far better, okay? It will be more accurate. And one of the advantage model is we don't uh, depend on the geometry. Of course, it is there. And we don't go to the signs of it because directly we depend on the experiment. So that is the advantage of empirical model or experimental model. So that we are, okay. So here we come across the word regression, okay? The regression is, it is a, uh, it is exploring or in another way, making a relationship between the input variables and the output variables. Trying to create a relationship between the process inputs and the outcome. So it is a statistical techniques which is useful and we can use it for a model prediction. So we will be uh, talking about what is regression, okay? So regression, say for example, you come across chemical process. Most of the cases in analysis, chemistry, and uh, all other cases, we come across chemi uh, chemical processes. And say, for example, suppose uh, uh, the output yield, how much percentage we are getting as an output. And you know that it is related with temperature, time, of course. Then we need to find out, so the uh, independent variables are time and temperature, and dependent is yield because yield is dependent upon uh, temperature and time, for example. So these things can be related. So we will try to relate temperature and time with uh, respect to yield. So that is a model development. Regression analysis is used to build a model to predict the yield, how much you will get. Say, for example, uh, I'll be talking about it in uh, uh, biodiesel, uh, generation or uh, production of biodiesel. In the production of biodiesel depends upon a, a lot of factors and the temperature is one of them and time of reaction is one of them. So we will know how much percentage of uh, uh, a bio oil is converted into biodiesel. So those things uh, can be a model. Okay. So regression model, or empirical model or analysis, these are the different words we use it. It is a, basically, it's a statistical process that you should be clear. It's a statistical means so much of data and we are trying to relate it, okay? For estimating the relationships, dependent variable is the input most probably. And with that of the output, which is an independent variable. That is the uh, idea behind RSM or Taguchi, we call it as our design of experiments, okay? okay. So this regression model, uh, these are the uh, terms which we come across, which I have already told, independent variable is an input and we, uh, an unknown parameter, we mostly scalar quantity with that of the independent variable, we'll try to relate it. Dependent is the outcome, okay? And of course there will be errors. We will try to draw the regression line and we wanted to estimate the errors and the errors should not be high. If the error is high, I think the model cannot be used for inference, cannot be used for inference, cannot be used for prediction, cannot be, uh, it cannot be qualified as a significant model. So that we will see. Okay, so regression analysis is just, uh, uh, as a case, you can understand some 
uh, uh, variable is here. Uh, let us say some uh, uh, variable the x1 is here. Let us say x is here and the outcome uh, y is on this axis. And you know that it will not come in a, a line. It will vary because we are dealing with experiments. Experiments will have error. It will have variability and it will vary. But when you wanted to model it, we wanted to come across y equal to mx, some graph, what is the slope of it? What is the equation for that? If it's a, a linear one like that. So uh, the idea is we wanted to estimate, the word estimate, you please understand. Estimate is prediction. We wanted to come, across, uh, come with a, a solution for the experiment. How y varies with respect to x. And suppose we have n pairs of observations, so n pair of experiments. So suppose, say for example, x is uh, temperature. We do experiments at 50 degrees centigrade, 70 degrees centigrade, 100 degrees centigrade, 150 degrees centigrade, like that. So x1, x2, x3, like that. And we will see how much is the yield of biodiesel as I quoted an example. That is why. So we have corresponding uh, pass for x, what is the y, like that. So we will try to relate the estimated line with sum of squares, how much it is uh, uh, far away from this estimated value. So that is uh, basically the analysis of variance, how much it is varying from that line. So that is what we call it as the sum of squares of the regression, sum of squares of the regressions. And here we calculate the error also. Uh, when we uh, do the regression analysis, uh, how far it is going. So two things I will be talking about. Uh, I'm not going deep into it because my idea is directly hands-on training, how to use uh, the model. So that will help you, motivate you to use it for your uh, experiment. So I will not waste many time, uh, much of my time here and I'll directly go to the uh, hands-on uh, model. Okay, so regression is there, mean square regression and mean square errors are there and uh, from that. So residual is nothing but error. So error is, this is the actual, actual observation, YA, and this is regression, that is a model. So the model has given one value, but the actual is there, how much difference, okay? So that we will make it in the sum of squares of error, SSE, sum of squares of error, and sum of squares of regression, and we will put it as together, okay? So you just remember that way. So error is nothing but the regression model value, YI cap, YI cap is the model result, and YA is the actual observation. So what is the deviation? Maybe plus or minus, that is why we take it as squares uh, to eliminate the minus sign from that. Okay, so this will give the adequacy of the model, whether it is adequate enough, uh, whether we, it can be used for inference and all. So for that, one of the major things I think you might have come across is coefficient of determination, R square value. We always find R square value. R square is the sum of squares of the regression divided by the sum of the squares of the total. The total is sum of squares of the regression plus sum of squares of the error, okay? So, uh, of course, you will not be calculating. Most of the time, we will be using softwares like Minitab or Design Expert, Design, yeah, design Expert. Some softwares you'll be using. Now, you can use it even at the MATLAB also. All, uh, some of the softwares you'll be using, but you should understand what it is. That is very important. Montgomery book explains what it is. That is very important, whether we can use the model results or not, or whether the model is adequate enough or not. The software will give some value, but you should be able to understand whether you can use that results which is given by the software. For that knowledge, we should have it. Okay. So coefficient of determination everywhere, we uh, compare R square value, actual R square value, model R square value, like that. Say for example, it talks about the adequacy of the regression model, whether it is okay or not. Say, for example, suppose if the value R square is, uh, it is better to have closer to one, okay? Zero to one, it varies, and it is better to have closer to one. 
if it is 0 0.877, so that is 87.7 percentage of variability in the data has been accounted by the model, has been taken care of by the model. That's the meaning. There will be variability in the data, but whether the model has taken into account all the variability in the experiment, so that is taken care by R square value. So R square is the amount of variability which is accounted in the regression model, which is taken care by the regression model. So it is better to have a closer value with that of the one. Okay. This is another word. Uh, I will explain why this is important because you would have come across this word correlation. Whether there is a correlation like that, people will ask. Always they will ask whether to be included in the model or excluded from that. Because you know that the output will be dependent upon so many inputs. But can we incorporate all the inputs or not is a big question. So some we can include, some we have to remove it. So how to remove certain things, how to include those, those things. So that can be decided at first by correlation analysis. So correlation is again a statistical techniques, how two paths of variables are related. You have done some experiments. How the input affects the output. Some inputs will not affect the output at all. There is no correlation for that. Okay. So that is the meaning of the word correlation. So there is no need to include it in our model. So when you, whether you wanted to include a particular variable as an input or not, we had to be decide whether this input will affect the output or not. So how strongly it affects, that has to be studied by correlations. It can be used by your Excel sheet, or MATLAB, or any tool. Excel itself will give correlation, whether there's a correlation between uh, two variables. Say, for example, just an example of uh, coding it here. So you, here you can see this point. Uh, in this point, there is no correlation between X and Y. If this is X and Y, if X varies, Y varies, no, I think we couldn't see anything at all. So why we had to include this X1 here in our model, it is meaningless to have it. Say, for example, this case, if I say this is X2, this is another input, like time, temperature, concentration, like that, as I told in the chemical process, time, temperature, concentration, pH value, like that, we can have so many things. Uh, say, for example, this Y is yield. Now you can see, if, suppose say X2 is uh, time, time of reaction. You can see that if the time of the reaction is increasing, yeah, the Y increases, you can see that Y increases. So it has a correlation. You can just plot it out and you can find out whether there is a correlation. Yes, it has a correlation, better correlation. It's a 70 percentage correlation is there, 0.7. Here you can see the correlation is less, not that much influence. Here there is zero influence, of course. So that study is very important. So these two are positive correlations. It's all positive correlation because when the X increases, Y increases. In the same way, you can, you can see here, so if I put this is the X3, and if I put the same yield, and if I put temperature, say for example, X3 is, say for example, it's the temperature. And if I say that the temperature increases, the yield decreases. So it has a correlation, but it is negative. Negative correlation, it has a negative correlation. So these things, it is minus 0.7. So this is very, very important in experiment to find out whether, especially in model development, empirical model development, predictions, uh, we need to have that uh, uh, in our mind because that is very, very important. Why is it very, very important is in the sense, uh, which input we can avoid it because to have all the inputs, then the number of experiments will be high and it will take too much of time. Whether we can vary it or not, suppose the question is, in, if you are publishing, you wanted to publish a paper, then the reviewer will ask, why you cannot include that variable? Because that is significant, but you cannot include it in your experiment. So why, they will ask. Then you should answer it, defend it. Sir, I did a correlation study and the correlation value was low. Then I, we thought, okay, that we can avoid it. So this is very important in our uh, starting of experiments. Okay, I'll keep going. So uh, I talked about linear regression. That is one variable with another. 
and most of the cases in our cases in engineering experiments and all there will not be uh, one variable there will be multiple variable regressor okay variable multiple inputs more than one inputs we will be having which will be influencing the outcome output or the results is not so we need to go for multiple regression as uh, another example uh, those who are doing it in a uh, machining cutting tool it depends upon life of the cutting tool depends upon not only the speed angle and so much is that but we, i have just put one or two but it can be x3 x4 like that okay so you cannot take one okay life of the cutting tool depends upon the speed we cannot say like that it depends upon the material in which the tool is also cutting so much of things are there involved so so that has to be desired so we will be dealing with multiple variables so the formula goes not only b1 it will be beta 2 like that okay so much uh, it will uh, influence the output but how to uh, present it for the papers for the uh, things because uh, not one variable affects the output. There are more than one variables affect the output. So that comes the headache of uh, uh, presenting it, evaluating, and estimating. Okay, that comes the issue. Say, for example, here you can see, uh, as I said, X1 is, let me take time. That is, X2 is temperature. That will affect the yield. How to draw it? Then we have to deal with three dimensions because now three variables are coming in two input variables and output variables. So we have to deal with three. Suppose if it is four, I think our eyes cannot perceive four dimensions. And God has given only three dimensions for us to perceive, understand it. Okay, but we have to go one by one, two or three three dimensional pictures like that. We need to go for it. Okay, this is a, a one uh, diagram. We call it as contour plot. I'll talk about it. This is a contour plot where we can uh, project it on the ground axis. Then we can interpret it because we need to interpret what the experiment says. That is very important. Okay, so multiple uh, linear regressions. So this is our area. I'm just coming to our area, isn't it? So basically, I just touched upon. So far, what I have touched upon is data, informations, and we are dealing with statistics. And uh, not only one variable, we'll be dealing with so many variables, and there will be relations between those two things. That is regression, we talked, uh, talked about it, and we talked about correlations. And we are dealing with more than one input, which affects output. Most of the engineering experiments like that, so we are dealing with several factors, several factors in the several inputs, which affects the output. So the things are getting complicated, more complicated now. So when it is getting more complicated, I think uh, we have to be a little bit more careful about it, isn't it, in dealing with it. Okay. So design of experiment, what it is, design of experiment, the word itself, if you divide it uh, one by one, designing the experiment that is what is called as design of experiments so it is uh, apply application of statistics in planning what input i should select and the selected input uh, how much i should vary what should be the minimum value what should be the maximum value whether there will be a linear variation or non-linear variations then i have to do three levels so it is planning once it is planned what are the things uh, to be included that's what i told correlation study pilot experiments or uh, literature reviews this all will help in the planning stages three things will help you one is literature do thorough literature on your area and see how it has varied for them so that you can take it in all. And you will be doing something different from what they have done it. So you should do a pilot experiment. Pilot experiment is an initial experiment to finalize the input variables, to finalize the range. So that planning part is very important. Once you plan it, then only you can design it. So 
So planning and designing is a basic uh, uh, step, initial step for that. Then you should do conduct the experiments. You have to conduct the experiments by because you will be designing the inputs, and you have to really do the experiments, observe the results, and put it on the output for the significant uh, inputs. What are the outputs like that? You have to take it. Then we will be doing the analysis of the results, interpretation to evaluate which factors, how much, how much they control it. Okay. So here another important word, uh, because for my first point, uh, first half of my talk should be on the significance of going for design of experiment. Okay. So uh, another word is interaction, no interaction, what it is. You should understand it. Okay. This is not much important, but anyway, I'll just touch upon it. Factorial experiments is you should be able to do all possible combinations. When you have three variables and all possible combinations, if you do it, I think I'll show you. Uh, then you'll be having more number of experiments to come into picture. Okay. I, I think I'll show you. So that is uh, uh, all possible combinations if you have enough time, enough resources, and uh, possibilities, then you can do a full factorial design. So for example, two factors. Let me use the same example so that you will uh, understand it easily. Factor A is, let me take, is time. Okay. And factor B is temperature, say for example. Okay. Now you can uh, see, I'm talking about no interaction. Okay. And observation is, let me say, yield. Yield percentage, that is Y, okay? Yield percentage. That's an observation. So B at low level, B is temperature at low level. Say, for example, at 10 degrees centigrade, okay? For example. And high is at, at 20 degrees centigrade. First, what we will do is, at 10 degrees centigrade, we will vary the uh, time and do the experiments. We will keep one factor constant at a time. Say for example, temperature at 10 degrees centigrade and we will vary the time of reaction and observe what is the yield is. Then what we will do is, we will uh, vary the temperature to a higher level. Say for example, it is 20 degrees centigrade. For example, this is 10 degrees centigrade. Then we will do vary it. But you can see that the variation is almost a similar way. Similar pattern is repeated. There is no interaction between two input values. Two input values in the sense that is x1 and that is x2. But there is no interaction between those two things. But now this is the case you take for example. This is very interesting fact. So for example, now you take B at low. This is 10 degrees centigrade as I said. Okay. And I am varying the time. So this is, for example, this is 30 minutes, some example, this is 60 minutes, okay. Now at 10 degrees centigrade, if I change it uh, from, for 10 minutes, 30 minutes if I do, and I will get this result. And if I uh, do it for 60 minutes, I will get a better result, a higher yield. But now the things are reversing. When I change the other factor, uh, from 10 degrees centigrade to I'm uh, making it into 20 degrees centigrade. This I'm changing it to into, uh, 20 degrees centigrade. Now what happens is at 20 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes the yield is 20. But if I increase the time, now you can see it as decreasing. This is the issue. Now you cannot say uh, as you increase the time, yield increases. No. At 10 degrees centigrade only it is like that. But if you vary the time, uh, temperature to 20 degrees centigrade, the factor X has changed, then it reverses. This is called interaction effect. So this is mostly neglected in conventional way of doing experiments. We won't take into account these things. Interaction between input variables are heavy in engineering especially complex things. So this is where this design of experiments comes in handy. It will help us to solve it.
So for example, this is no interaction. Straight away you can go. I'll come back uh, across later. But when you have interactions, interactions in the sense that when B is at a different level, and when you vary the variable A, yield is going to change. So that uh, is one of the trickiest issue, and we have to take into account. Say for example, because optimization, we are going for it. We need to optimize the input variables so that you will get what we intended, the output. So this traditional way is one factor at a time. You'll vary one factor at a time. Say for example, here we are varying the time and we are uh, observing the yield. And that itself will vary. Okay, you can see uh, uh, here you are getting an optimum. But uh, if it increases further, it decreases. You can see it is coming down. This is a, a, a yield versus time. When I put it for temperature, temperature also it is like that. But my point is, <laughs> at what temperature you have done this with respect to time? It will not be the same. You would have done it for 140 degrees centigrade. Okay, 140 degrees centigrade. But the same result will not be the, this result will not be the same when you do the same experiment at 180 degrees centigrade. Then how will you plot it? Then how will you plot it? There will, uh, comes the difficulties. And what will you say about it? If it is a one time, you can say as the time increases at optimum of uh, 1.7 hours, you will get better yield. But at 140 degrees centigrade, suppose. But when it comes to 180 degrees centigrade, what will be going to change? So one factor at a time, there will be a lot of issues. Of course, they were initially they tried to plot it like this, this graph, and uh, you will find it very difficult to plot this one. <laughs> so, for example, uh, this is temperature. Uh, this is this is a uh, time. Time is uh, this point here is time is plotted like that and temperature is plotted like that and you have to take the yield like this so they have, they have taken x1 and x2 here and this is contour plot okay uh, this contour plot we will be dealing in a response surface methodology i'll talk about it i'll uh, demonstrate with hands-on uh, experiment i'll just uh, trying to build some base for that so uh interaction is Many factors may influence each other. One factor may influence the other each other. You cannot say that uh, this is a classic example, isn't it? Uh, you cannot say yield depends upon time. It will vary. You cannot say yield depends upon temperature. It depends on both. There comes the problem. So optimal setting of factors may depend on the setting of other factor. One. You cannot say, okay, this time is good. No, you cannot say. This is good at, for this time. When the other factors are at a particular level, when the other factors are varying, we don't know. Unless otherwise you do the experiments. Then it will become very difficult. So much of experiments you have to do. It. So much of experiments you have to do. It. So the same example, suppose you wanted to find out uh, at what uh, time you will get the optimum result. You wanted to find out the optimum. You have to do it at all the temperatures to find out the optimum. Then the number of experiments will be too high. Okay. So when factors are optimized separately, one at a time, when you do it, you will not get the optimum results. And we may end up with the word suboptimal. It's not the actual optimum, but what we say is optimum. So that is not good. We should get the global optimum actual optimum. So for that, one factor at a time change, the traditional method will not work. And we need to go for design of experiments. So the interaction and no interaction I wanted to emphasize. Now you can see that when factor A is varied from low to high, the output varies from 50 to 55. And if you see the variation is 55 minus 50 only, Five. I'm not talking about the unit. So here also, when the value of B is high, two levels for B, it varied from 20 to 25. That's okay. 
because the difference is 25 minus 20 is again 5. 55 minus 50 is 5. Okay, when you vary, it is low to high, that's how it goes. So, no interaction between two factors, factors A and B. Factors means two inputs, like time and temperatures. It doesn't affect much. But you can see here now, now if it had a B at a higher level, say for example at a higher temperature, when you vary the time, the yield varies highly. It is 45 minus 20, variation is 25. But at low level, at low temperature, the variation is only 5, just 5. So you cannot come up with a solution. And now you can see it is reversing. At a low temperature, say for example, it is decreasing as you vary the time. Here it is increasing. So what you will say as the time increases, yield increases? No. Here, here what you have to say, as the time increases, yield decreases because temperature is different. I have to understand there are issues. So now you can see these results are also possible. These results are also possible. So we have to take into account the complexity of experiments, the complexity of engineering and a science experiment, complexity of science experiments. So those sciences, we should take into account all the factors and it's influencing things on the outcome. So we need to go for response surface methods or design of experiments. So here is a response is influenced by several variables that we have studied. And the objective is to optimize this response. And this was introduced by George Box in, uh, and Wilson long back. They have introduced it. And now software has come and we'll be using it. Okay. So statistical approach uh, uh, response surface method can be employed to maximize the production. Actually, it came Taguchi. You talked about Taguchi. Now you are not using Taguchi. Taguchi, there are some drawbacks and so they are not using it. Still, some of them are using it, but uh, uh, there are some problems. Actually, we need to study that. Huh? There are some issues with Taguchi and uh, they will come with another sets like response surface methods and mini tab, so much of other things are there. Okay, uh, so this will take into account the interaction among process variables, especially the inputs to find out the globalized optimum values. So R is why we should go for it, significance, why it is important, why we should apply. It yields maximum amount of information with minimum amount of it. Because some of the experiments in engineering or science involve so much costly, isn't it? Now, even in COVID, you, uh, you know that uh, RT-PCR is so costly. A lot of people cannot afford it. That is why they go for random antigen that is relatively cheaper. So like that, depends upon the chemicals, depends upon uh, the wastage. You cannot do so much of experiments nowadays because if it is money, constraint is there. So we should try to get a minimum amount of work, maximum amount of uh, information and uh, influence of uh, input variables. So RSM approach uh, will not only determine optimum condition with minimum number of experiments, but also gives information to estimate the result. Estimate is predicting, modeling. It will come up with the model so that for an unknown input values, what will be the output? That prediction can be done with response surface methods. So that is an advantage of RSM. So RSM, then not only that, it will allow us to evaluate the effect of multiple factors. You can evaluate how one factor, if it varies, how it varies, whether there is an interaction or not. All those things can be understood and can be evaluated using this responsive methods. Okay, just uh, another two, five, three minutes, then I'll go to the hands on. Okay, before that, steps on experimentation. What we have to do is first establish your objective, output outcome, whether you wanted to minimize the yield or maximize the yield. You wanted to minimize the pH value or maximize the pH value. 
whether you wanted to uh, maximize the strength or minimize the brittleity okay brittleness so we should establish what is your objective okay identification of factors that i told you do a, a extensive literature survey do pilot experiments to find out which factors are influencing factors this is brainstorming we need to do a lot of work homeworks and uh, whether uh, what is the range of it identification and range if fixing is very important then we need to design it conduct the experiments take the results then we should able to uh, evaluate how it is and that can be used for applications that is how the industrial revolution of japan and all came because of this design of experiments they were able to optimize all the process parameters they were uh, able to produce products with optimum values results so that is the uh, purpose of uh, design of experiments so constraints we should be careful about it how much experiments we can do it whether we have the resources people equipment uh, the, the things time constraints materials money all those things has to be uh, taken into account for the cost of experimentation because cost is uh, uh, an important factor so the cost of experimentation you have to take into account and uh, that also has to be taken care of. the preliminary experimental design screening as i told uh, the word correlations whether there is a correlation between this input and output then otherwise you can neglect it that is why it's a identification of influencing range from where to temperature means 50 to 150 or 50 to 1000 degrees in degree. find out the influencing range major influencing range because we are trying to optimize it so that is very important that has to be taken care then we need to uh, uh, design to get the optimal setting of the significant factors important influencing factors has to be incorporated into the uh, design okay steps problem statement that's what i said minimize maximize choice of factors choice of inputs levels whether it is linear or non-linear linear means two levels is okay non-linear minimum three levels better to have five levels are you understand ranges in the sense minimum and maximum level in the sense linear means we can take minimum and maximum is okay when it is a non-linear it is a curved way then you should have minimum three better to have five like that levels that is important then choice of uh, response that is output what are the outputs we are uh, trying to optimize it then choice of experimental design that i'll talk about it okay perform the experiment do the analysis whether the model is adequate enough or not then we can conclude and recommend uh, what has to be done okay major approach is uh, as i said it's a factorial taguji response surface method the three major things factorial involves so much taguji was the initial development now taguji has been outdated and they go for full factorial design is it is of course simple extremely inefficient in the sense we need to do a lot of experiments so for example number of tests is y to the power of x y is the number of conditions and x is the number of factors so for example there are eight factors eight inputs which affects two condition linear two condition is uh, linear only linear means it is 2 to the power of 8, 2 to 6 experiments. It's not easy to do it. Uh, so that is a problem with factorial. But if you have resources, it will give an accurate result because more experiments you'll do it. And uh, you will do in all levels and uh, ranges. So that is good. But the problem is uh, cost, time, material. That is the issue with full factorial design. Fractional means we won't do all the experiments but strategically important points less than full fractional is less than full not all the ranges not all the combinations 
but uh, uh, the combinations and conditions are chosen to provide sufficient information for so strategical. We won't do it in all the points or all the levels for all the factors, but strategically for a factor, say for example, three points like that. More efficient, but risk is there. That is why the model adequacy has to be evaluated strictly. Efficiency is there, less number of experiments. Taguji, it was uh, uh, earlier created, and I don't want it to uh, say something negative on that because some of you may be using it, but you look at uh, look after the literatures. There are some constraints that are there with Taguji method. Okay, I'll leave it that way because it cannot support a response surface models. Response surface surface is uh, the entire area. Surface is just like painting, like a cloth. Uh, put it on a three D. Plot. If you put it as a curve, it covers the entire area. Uh, that uh, Taguji cannot support it. Okay, so that is why we go for a response surface. So a developer model describes it's a curve or surface, and we do it at very important points, places in the window, just like a room. If you take the room where you are sitting, you have X, Y, and Z. The entire air space of your room can be covered with a response surface method. Just like the three dimensional, you in your room, you take a corner to length and breadth as x1 and x2, y is your response, and the entire room volume is the area which can be covered with RSM. That's a beauty of it. At any point on the room, what will be the value of y can be predicted, estimated using response surface method. So that is the beauty of uh, RSM. So it's a surface volume based. The entire uh, area can be covered and plotted on the surface, that's all. Okay, plotted on the three dimension, but it covers the entire volume. Okay, so it's uh, use, I'm not going uh, again into the regressions. Okay, it uses the least square feet, calculate the system model, okay. And it can test whether the model is adequate enough for we have to test for the, its fitness, adequacy and significance. Then we can predict how does it behave, how the output behaves with respect to input. Okay, one or two examples, I think I'll just uh, talk about it. And uh, this I will demonstrate there. Okay, I'll take two examples. So, for example, uh, uh, this is one example where we will uh, using extraction of uh, biodiesel. Okay, so extraction of biodiesel is uh, we take uh, this is for example a rubber seed. Rubber seeds are available. We will collect it. We will crush it. Extract the oil that is bio oil. And this bio oil will be very thick, highly viscous in nature, cannot be used as a diesel. So it has to be, it will have a, a what I can say is a high acid value or a high viscosity for you to understand it easily. So the first step is to reduce its viscosity. We'll call it as a, a fatty acid, free fatty acid FFA. Reduce the viscosity of it then only we can produce it as a biodiesel. So two steps are involved. Uh, don't get uh, complicated, just uh, understand that way. If you are not into this process, you have bio oil, like coconut oil, uh, mustard oil, sunflower oil, like that you have some bio oil. Let me say it's a rubber seed oil. So that is not diesel. So two steps you have to do. First you have to do, reduce it's a free fatty acid you have to reduce the acid value. So objective is to reduce the acid value, reduce the viscosity. In the second stage, you have to produce, convert it into, conversion it into biodiesel. So in the conversion stage, increasing the yield of biodiesel is the objective. So first objective is to reduce the viscosity or acid value. 
in the second stage to maximize the yield that is the idea behind it okay okay just for the introduction so uh, i think i'll take that one okay here i'll do so for one of time i'll just uh, skip this one and this i'll talk about okay two stages i said uh, any buy oil when you do it uh, in a two stage this is the way so you have x1 is methanol oil x2 is uh, sulfuric acid x3 is the speed okay stirring speed we have to mix it and time is the duration hours uh, sorry in minutes so you are using methanol with bio oil that uh, volume ratio sulfuric acid uh, you are direct percentage by volume speed in rpm and time in minute so this is what uh, uh, initially i talked about it uh, i have to understand uh, here this is the one which i uh, uh, said uh, uh, yeah, this is the one which I uh, talked about it. We need to understand uh, the influencing factors. So here I had taken four uh, influencing factors. Four influencing factor is uh, uh, one is uh, methanol, methanol oil. Okay, that is uh, X one. Sulfuric acid is X two speed is x3 and time is x4 so these all the uh, four factors are there okay and uh, i know it is uh, uh, not linear linear not when it is uh, when you increase it will increase linearly but it is non linear so that is why now the levels and range range is minimum to maximum so i am taking the ratio is 0.25 is minimum high is 0.45 and it is non-linear so i am taking three levels of course it will become as five level uh, that i'll talk about it okay so this is uh, how important is we have to fix it how will you fix this values i said literature survey pilot experiments you need to do some experiments why i am taking it say so for example this is minimum value for methanol oil ratio. Suppose if I do it with 0 0.11, 0 0.10, suppose it is 0 0.1, why I have not done it is, if I do it with 0 0.1 methanol oil ratio, I won't able to finish that experiment. Here the objective is to reduce, reduce the acid value, reduce the acid value. Okay, I wanted to reduce the acid value. That is the objective. I want to reduce the acid value to the minimum. So if I use it 0.1, it will not reduce the acid value. So why I have to do it? I won't do it. Then this is a, a higher range is 0.45. I have fixed it. Suppose if I use uh, okay 0.7. Uh, it is too costly to use methanol that much percentage and uh, the reduction is not that much at 0 0.45 itself I am getting better reduction why I should use more like that I will finalize it similarly the acid values maximum minimum speed also I should finalize and the time at 50 minutes I was able to complete the experiments why I should use it for 100 minutes that is not needed. So this needs lot of planning, lot of brainstorming. Discuss with your supervisor, discuss with your peer group, discuss with your uh, research fellows, and you do all the brainstorming before finalizing this column, this table. Finalize it. Then only we can do it. So once I have finalized it, okay, then I'll now I'll take you. Uh, uh, then I'll take you to the design of experiments. Okay. I uh, hope you could see the screen.
Anybody? Those who are there are able to see the screen. Someone uh, can respond. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I, uh, I have I'm using design expert software like that. Minitab, MATLAB, so much of things are there. I'm just uh, using design of experience. So I just uh, I have uh, copied. I have installed it in my system. So I'm just uh, okay now. It's a uh, evaluation one only. Okay. I can use a recent one, or I think I'll start with new, then you'll understand. Okay. So, so much of Windows will come. Okay, I'm using response surface. Here you can see, and I'm going to use central composite design. And uh, how many factors are influencing? You can see here, there are uh, four factors are influencing. Methanol oil ratio, sulfuric acid, speed and time so i'll take it uh, there are four factors that are influencing and i'm going to find out the output as uh, uh, okay sorry uh, okay so uh, i don't want to name it I, it will take time uh, methanol okay just i'll put it and then i'll show okay units i can put it then it is uh, as it a value. Then it is, um, I think it is uh, speed. Then I have, you can see it is time. Okay, four is influencing. So I should uh, mark out the values. And the lower level for uh, is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25 I'll put it, and the higher is point. Four five. Similarly, uh, the as it value it is varying from six to fourteen, isn't it? You can see here six to fourteen. So I'll put six here, and uh, fourteen is the maximum. Then it comes to speed. I'm varying from three fifty to nine hundred. So it is three fifty to nine hundred. Okay, and similarly time yeah, it is ranging from thirty to forty minutes 32 50 minutes so uh, there are 30 experiments are there it's a central composite design i'm not talking about a different types of design better you read montgomery or otherwise here itself uh, the help uh, 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 there are files are there tutorial files are there these tutorial files are really helpful you can take printouts and you can understand it very easily okay that is very very useful uh, stuff there okay so uh, I'm using central composite design. There is advantages in it. I'm not uh, uh, going to talk about it. Okay. So there are 30 runs are there, 24 uh, variations, and the center point there will be six will be repeated. Okay. Now you can see uh, output is the response. I'll say acid value because I wanted to minimize it. Acid value should be low or viscosity should be low. That's an idea. So if I finish it, you can see. This is what design is all about. So methanol ratio, acid value, speed, time. This is the design of experiments. Now the 30 experiment was designed by the central composite design. So this is strategically important points. So it will cover a wide range. Now you can see we gave point, uh, uh, we varied from, uh, I think methanol is from 0.25 to 0.45, you can see. That is what we have given. So it do it does for 0 0.35, 0 0.25, 0 0.15 is also there, 0 0.45, 0 0.55. There are five ranges now you can see. It has taken five ranges because we have uh, taking into account uh, as a nonlinear case, as a nonlinear case. Then what you have to do is, then comes the real work. So now the design part of the experiment is over. Planning part of the experiment is over. Once the planning is over, then you have to do the experiment. Yeah, that is costly of us. Then you have to do the experiment. Uh, uh, once you do the experiment, then only you will understand what are the issues are there. Then you have to fill it out. So when you wanted to avoid issues, the pilot study is very important in fixing designing. Because after designing, when you end up with problem, then a lot of losses will be there, time and uh, money energy 
you will ask. So take much care in the design part of it. Once the design part of it, then you have to really do the experiments. Once you do the experiment, then you have to fill it out after every experiments. They say it is a, a standard run because uh, you better you do it in a random way uh, to avoid uh, the experimental errors. That's a, a purpose there. Okay, it is not done in one order. They do it in a variable order. You can see the speed variations. You can see a lot of variations uh, they are given. So find out and fill up this column one by one. Do all the 30 experiments and fill it out. Okay, uh, if you have already you're having it in a, if you have done it experiment, just you can copy it over there. I'll show you uh, which one I have uh, done it. Okay, say for example, okay. I don't know to say no. Okay, so this is uh, the same thing. Uh, I have filled up with these values. Okay, I have filled up these values. Now you understand uh, uh, all the experiments, uh, hard fought experiments. I have done it, and uh, I have filled up all the things. I have filled up all the things. So once it is filled up, I'll show you here. Then I will come back. <clears throat> okay, the 30 experiments and all the acid values have been uh, filled up. We have filled up all the acid values. So this is experimental work results. We have to do it and uh, uh, we have to do the experiments. Uh, I'm just showing it in an exaggerated view. So one by one, uh, we had to do all these values. Then we had to find and develop the models. So this is ANOVA table that I'll show here. Okay, I'll come back to that. Yeah. So here, uh, we need to analyze it, isn't it? So optimizations, Sorry, before that, we need to uh, transformations and they have given if the ratio is uh, more than, uh, greater than 10, transformation is required. And since the ratio is less than that, I think that is not. So we will uh, take the models. Model there is, you can see here, there are suggestions are coming. It is quadratic is suggested. I think whether you can see it or not, I don't know. I'll come back to it. Yeah. So you can see, uh, of course, it is not coming. Okay, no problem. So uh, you can, uh, I hope you see, there are uh, uh, different models are suggested at the right hand side, you can see different models are suggested and uh, the better is quadratic and it is a non-linear one. Quadratic is suggested because of this uh, AF and uh, P value, I think this I talked about it or not, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, you should understand the purpose of F values and other things. Sorry, uh, F values is, uh, whether I said or not, I don't know. F values is one of the uh, fitness test, whether the model is uh, good or that. It is a ratio between mean square error of the regression by mean square error of uh, error, error, regression and error, I think here you can see, yeah. So it is a mean square error of the regression by the mean square of the error, sum of squares of the error and it is sum of the squares of the regression. So this AF value should be as high as possible so that uh, it will be, uh, we can uh, progress it. So diagnostics, uh, whether uh, you can go higher or not, uh, I think we need to do it. So model is suggested as quadratic, you can see here. Okay, suggested model is a uh, quadratic model is suggested. You have a, a linear mean EF1 and other things. What it is suggesting is based on this uh, EF values. EF value should be high. 
If the F value is high, the P value will be very low. Okay. And degree of freedom is four. Uh, and uh, you can see the F value is high, that is suggested. So you have to take the model as quadratic in this case. And for every case, it will uh, vary. Then we will do the uh, analysis of variance. So here you can see the model F value is so high. So it is significant. If it is significant only, then you can proceed. If it is not significant, you cannot proceed further. And the fitness test, a lot of tests are there. And one of the basic tests, which I'm talking, there are a lot of tests are there, outlier like that. I think you can go through the tools because this is a, within short time, I cannot explore all those things for you. Otherwise you need a one day or a two days workshop for that. Okay, this is a R square. You can see it is 0.997. So you can see that 99% of all the variability of the model has been included in this model. So it is significant. And this P value is uh, very low. And you see that less than 0.05 is important. Less than 0.05 is very important. And here your value is 0 0.001. So it is significant. And you can see the influence of the variables. You can see the methanol influence is so high. And you can see sulfuric acid influence is there. Stirring speed has less influence on that. And of course, time has more influences. Then this is A, B, A, C, A, D, B, Z, B, D. Is all, there are interactions. I'll talk about it. Okay, there are interactions. This is, uh, uh, again, it's a, uh, uh, it's a fitness residual is error. And uh, this is very important before going into it. But if you are good at uh, uh, analyzing this ANOVA table, this is enough uh, to signify uh, whether we can go further or not. Okay. So uh, I think before going into this control plot, I think I'll show you the 3D plot. Then you will understand. There are some issues are here. You can see. Okay, now you will understand. Okay, I'll put it. So the acid value, y-axis should be minimum. That is our optimum. It has to be at the very low value. Here, A and B has been taken, but you have four variables, isn't it? X1, X2, X3, and X4 is there. So let us take methanol and sulfuric as it has been uh, plotted now. Okay, this two has been plotted and you can see just like a room, I said, you can uh, vary the things and see. So when this graph is plotted like this, you understand that the stirring speed and the time is kept at the middle of it. You can see time is from 30 to 50, but we are keeping at the middle. Stirring speed is from 350 to 900, we are keeping at the middle. So that has to be careful. The actual factors of C is 625, D is 50, it is mid. Uh, I have to understand here. So we keep the time and uh, temp, uh, speed at uh, the middle point and we are able to uh, see how things are varying when we vary the methanol uh, and uh, how to understand it. How to understand it. Okay. Uh, better thing is uh, uh, you can see you put this 3D plot and before that this contour plot. Contour is the base. I'll, I'll show you separately. Yeah, you can see contour plot. The contour plot gives a good idea. Very good idea. You can understand. I think I now can scratch it. I think or I think now you can. Okay, uh, I think I'll show this. This I have varied, uh, but I'll take the default.
sorry, something happened. I will do it again. Uh, sorry, I did something and uh, I'm not able to take it back. <laughs> so I'll just close it and uh, I'll do it again. Oh, sorry, I got closed it completely, but anyway, I'll come back. Okay, uh, so for example, we wanted to have a minimum value of acid. So you can hear, uh, I think whether you are able to see it or not, I don't know. Uh, I, I was not able to magnify it. So if I magnify, there are some issues coming. But anyway, I'll try my best. Uh, so you can see, uh, four is, uh, I think you may not be able to see if you are having a, using your mobile phones, I think you cannot see it. <laughs> That's an issue. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I can't help you out. So you can, uh, the contour part show, this is uh, this line, this curve is 0. 0.4. So we wanted to have it in this range. We need to do the experiments in this range. This green color is uh, higher value. Okay, here you can see the red is so high, the blue is 0. 0.29, okay? So better to do experiments in this range. For this range, methanol uh, value should be above 0.4, higher values, and sulfuric acid should be above uh, 12, like that. So then only you will have uh, low acid values. One more chart I wanted to uh, say, very, very useful is perturbation chart. This perturbation, perturbation, Perturbation chart is a very good indicator how it is drawn. This is very important. I'm just telling you, listen to it. You can see uh, A is uh, sulfuric acid, isn't it? A percentage of a ratio of sulfuric acid uh, with the oil. But uh, there are other three factors are there. Acid value, speed, and time. We keep all the other three at the midpoint value. You can see that other threes are the midpoint values. I'm showing at the right hand side. At the mid values and how the methanol will influence the acid value is plotted. Now if you want to change it, I can do this way. Acid value, I can keep it low. You see how it goes? Entirely a different way it goes. But we'll keep it at the middle. And if I vary the time of reaction, you can see how it goes. It goes. Things are very. So, all we have not done experiments. We have done it at strategical points, and but we are able to predict it now. You can see I am varying the speed, and you can understand how things are varying. How things are varying. So that's the advantage of this model. Perturbation will give a 2D diagram and shows how things are influencing. You can understand everything is depending upon the slope of the curve. If the slope is so high, the influence is more high, more. And you see that it's all negative up to particular range, mid-range, then it goes positive. At the left-hand side, you can see that as you increase the oil value, the uh, acid value decreases. But beyond that point, acid value de increases. But our objective is to minimize it. That you can understand. Okay, uh, this is uh, beautiful. A and B, and you can see. Let me put it A and C. And uh, just for a graph, I'm showing how this methanol and uh, speed influence the acid. Yeah, methanol and speed, and I can put it. AD, BZ, like that. So, which one I wanted to show it in uh, the results and other things, that will be the question you'll be asking, isn't it? So, that is why uh, the better uh, influencing parameters you can uh, find out in the ANOVA table. I'll show the ANOVA table. ANOVA table, you can see the F value should be maximum. I think you can see here AD or the influence, the influence of AD is so high. A is uh, Sulfuric acid D is the 
speed influence is there and the AB influence is there. So based on that, uh, that particular curves you can have it. Okay, oh, one more is there. I'll show that and I will keep uh, uh, winding up. I will not take beyond, uh, I think two o'clock you have to come back. Sorry, I'll take another five minutes. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, sorry. Okay, just I'll show one more and I'll come to the summary of it. Sorry, I've already taken time. So, similar way, uh, I'll just open transistrification. So, here, uh, here similarly, there are five factors in there. Okay, here uh, in the transistrification experiments, here you can see. In the transistrification, there are five. One more is also added. I have added temperature also. Not only time, temperature also has been added in the yield of uh, biodiesel. So we, here we have to maximize it, maximize the yield. So in maximizing the yield, similarly, I have done the uh, same way. I have done the design of experiments. Then yield, yield, I have uh, plotted it. So here I have to maximize the yield. Okay. Here I have to maximize the yield. So we will do the experiments, include all the results, and we will try to fix it. I think here the linear is suggested. Uh, there are some problems with this model, and we will diagnose it, and we will uh, keep doing. And you can do the perturbation chart. You can see how each is influencing. You see the E is uh, the temperature is influencing in a positive way, whereas other things that are negative. When it is a horizontal line, that shows it has a very low influence on the E. When it is horizontal, it, it shows there is a very low yield uh, influence on the outcome. So that's uh, how we will uh, conclude. So before uh, getting all these things, so first you should uh, do the ANOVA analysis. Without uh, doing ANOVA, uh, I think you should not proceed. So if the ANOVA analysis are fine, then only we should uh, uh, go ahead for inferences. So I just to summarize it, I think, sorry uh, if you couldn't understand much. Uh, I hope I have triggered your uh, passion uh, for exploring more for your uh, research. So RSM is planning, conducting, and basically to bring out valid and objective conclusions, inferences. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, it enables us to uh, test several parameters with minimum number of experiments. That's an advantage of it. And the care has to be taken in the choice of uh, process variables and the range uh, that has to be done with uh, a lot of literature survey and uh, pilot experiments. And uh, uh, this will give a significant optimal settings. Okay, uh, the significant uh, factors, you will get it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, sorry, I, I have taken uh, much time uh, over to uh, the organizers. Is thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable uh, information sharing with us. So I request participants, uh, if you have any doubt, you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask you. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, you are audible. Uh, sir, I want to ask a question, sir. Actually, the 3D graphs are a bit tricky to understand. I mean, I was actually working on uh, these particular designs and I really feel very difficulty in understanding the 3D graphs. Like uh, if, uh, if we, there are three variables and we want to change one and how the graph is showing uh, what is increased and what is decreased. So I just want you to tell me uh, just in a simple way that if there is a 3D graph in front of us and how we can just understand by seeing uh, how what it is actually interpret, how we can actually yeah. interpret that. Very good, very good, very good question. So uh, my suggestion is first you try to understand the perturbation chart. Perturbation is easy to understand because it is a line curve. Okay, are you able to understand the perturbation chart? Uh, no, sir. Okay, <laughs> then I have to share it again. Uh, shall I do that? I think I have to ask that analysis. Is it okay? Just, uh, only a five minutes. Uh, I'll just tell you. Okay. Yes, sir. You can, sir. Yeah, you can see the positive curve. Yes, sir. How it is done is 
uh, the four variables, say for example, in our example, which I showed, there are four variables. Yes, sir. How it is drawn is all the three variables, say for example, x1, x2, x, sorry, I'll take, a, if I wanted to uh, interpret x1 variation with respect to y, x2, x3, and x4s are kept at the middle range. Uh, you understand the right range, isn't it? We are taking low and high. So the midpoint, the other things are fixed. And uh, you may not have done experiments like that, but it shows how the variable x1 influence the output y when the other three factors are kept in the middle. So that is a It increase uh, the X1, how the output varies, for my case, how the yield varies, like that. Yes. So that is something you should try to understand is interpretation chart, because it's a line. The same understand before 3D is, you should understand the contour plot. You take the contour plot. Contour plot is uh, X and Y, X1 and, uh, sorry, not uh, X1 and X2, two input variables. And the output will be marked as a curve. Okay. Output will be marked as a curve and with the values. So you can plot the area. Now it's a, a two dimensional I'm talking about. First is line, then it is area, two dimensional contour. You can, uh, if you have a highlighter, you can mark, highlight the area in which where you are getting a maximum yield. In my case, that uh, first case is where the acid value is low. So that range you will get it. So you can understand X1 and X2 where is a minimum value, where it is getting the optimum value. So that range you can find out. So once first step is line diagram, then contour, then go to 3D. Okay. Uh, for understanding, if you look at my papers, I think you can just uh, science direct. Uh, you can put uh, uh, my papers. Uh, I have explained it. Okay. Uh, 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 or at Windraj, okay. if you put it in science direct, some of my papers you will have, uh, which I have shown, rubber seed oil and other things. If you Google it, also you'll get it. Otherwise, I can share it with your organizations so that they can share with you. Okay, that I can do it. I can share some of my papers with our nieces so they can share it in the common group. You can go through it. Okay. So then my better idea is you put 3D plot and exactly below you put the contour plot while uh, writing the results. Then you can easily write what the results okay. say about it. Uh, I think. Uh, if you cannot understand, I think it takes time. And if you share uh, with me, uh, I think I can give some inferences. Okay. If you mail me, it is redwindraj at gmail. My mail ID is redwindraj at gmail. R E D W I N R A J at the rate of gmail.com. So I can help you out. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you can uh, put it on the chat also, chat window also. Okay, sir. So if there is no more doubt, uh, we'll uh, end this session now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, valuable sh session, sh sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, sir.